Hey, hey, you guys, and welcome back to our channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Chelsea, and I am currently pregnant with our first baby. Um, it is a girl, and we are very excited to be 28 weeks along. Um, we did conceive this baby through IVF, and I do make a lot of videos on what that process was like. We vlogged that whole um, process, and we also continue to share as much information as we can about infertility and IVF and fertility treatments and what um, that's like just to help any of you out there who might be going through fertility treatments who are still trying to conceive um, and hopefully this video will help as well. So in this video I want to share with you what happens after you find out you're pregnant through IVF um, this will all be based off of my experience um, and through my clinic. So your experience might be a little bit different, but um, this could give you some insight as to what to expect once you do get that positive pregnancy test finally um, and kind of what the steps are after that. So if you are interested in seeing what my experience was like, go ahead and keep watching. So I've already made a couple videos um, that maybe you might want to watch before this. One is my whole IVF process from consultation to egg retrieval and then we did a frozen embryo transfer, not a fresh embryo transfer. So then I have a video all about my FET and then now I'm making the third installment to that series, I guess if you want to call it a series um, of what happens after your frozen embryo transfer um, and after you find out it's successful because for us we were super lucky that we were successful on our first transfer. Okay so because you're generally transferring an embryo that's five days old um, you get to do your pregnancy test a little bit sooner than you would if it was like through a natural conception. Usually through natural conception you can test about 14 days past ovulation and get a positive or, you know, like have a clear result. Um, but because our embryo was already five days old, we tested, um, at nine days post five day embryo, old embryo transfer is kind of what they, how they term, term it. Sometimes, um, you will do a three day old embryo, but in most cases they want to do a five day old embryo. So that's what ours was. So we, our pregnancy test, which in with IVF, they do a beta blood test where they um, check the beta numbers of your HCG levels in your blood. Um, and they do that nine days. For us, it was nine days past the transfer. So pretty sure our transfer was on a Wednesday and then the following, not that next Friday, but the next Friday, we went in for our blood test and... I went in early that morning. They told me they would call me by 6 p.m. that day. It was a lot of waiting. Some people do test early. You can test as early as like four days at home, four days past the transfer, just on a regular pregnancy test. But I did not let myself do that because I didn't want to like play games in my head. Like if I got a negative result that early and, you know, I just... You know, because you could get a positive result or that early or you could get a negative result and it could still be positive. Anyway, I just don't want to do that to myself. So I just waited until I would we would know for sure whether or not the transfer was successful. So like I said, we did the uh, blood draw around 7 a.m. that morning and I was told I would be called by 6 p.m. that night. It was a long time to wait, but they ended up calling us at noon that day and leaving a voice message just to call him back. So I was like, oh crap. Like part of me felt like it had totally worked. I just was super confident that it worked. I was super hopeful. Um, but then because they asked me to give them a call back, um, I thought, oh crap, something might be wrong. So we called them back and um, my IVF nurse told me that we were definitely pregnant. Our beta numbers were at 215, which is great. She told me you know, every clinic will say something different as to where they want the beta number to be, but um, for us, 
she said she wanted to see it above 100. So it was definitely above 100. We were super grateful. And so from there, she just kind of instructed us to, um, she told me that I could go back to kind of like my normal activity, take it a little bit easy as far as exercise and stuff goes, but um, that we were pregnant and we would do a second beta test one week from that day. And I know a lot of people do their second day beta test like two days after their first beta test, but she wanted to do it one week. So um, we were actually going to be out of town, I remember. So we were able to go in about four or five days instead of a full week. So we went to our beta, our second beta test the following Wednesday, I believe it was, so about five days. And um, at that beta test, they just, they didn't tell me what number they were looking for. She just said she wanted to see that it had increased um, significantly, I guess. So after that blood draw, we were told, we were actually just emailed, I think, our number and it was well above a thousand. To be honest, I really can't remember what it was. I'm sure if I looked through my emails, I could find it, but it was enough that it was very high and they were very excited and had no worries about that number um, increasing or whatever enough. So we were told at that point that we would go into our first ultrasound at seven weeks. So at this point we would be <clears throat> four or five weeks pregnant. And so um, they scheduled us our first ultrasound at seven weeks. I remember being so excited to go in and see the baby for the first time. I knew it wouldn't be very big, but I just was so used to just seeing like the inside of my uterus, empty uterus, the inside of my ovaries with a bunch of follicles. So it would, I was really excited to see something like living in there. Um, so that day came seven weeks. We, I think it was right on the dot. It was a Friday, seven weeks. We got to go into our fertility clinic and they do vaginal ultrasounds this early because, um, it's just, they can't really do, I don't know if they just can't get a great picture with just the regular abdominal ultrasounds which I was used to anyway, because I've had a ton of those um, going through IVF. You get a ton of vaginal ultrasounds. Um, so it was so cool. And I do remember being very anxious. Like, you know, I remember thinking of all the people I've heard that at seven weeks, they go in for their ultrasound and they don't hear a heartbeat or anything, which is what you would expect at a seven week ultrasound is they expect to hear a heartbeat. And so I remember like being very anxious about that, but Eric was very calm. He knew everything would be fine. Um, mostly I knew everything would be fine, but I also, you know, you just can't help but feel a little worried. Um, and like I said, I just had thought about all the people I knew that would go in at their seven week ultrasound appointment and not hear a heartbeat. And I thought, well, if it could happen to them, it could happen to me. But I tried to switch my perspective and just focus on the happy and successful stories I'd heard um, and think if those people could have a successful outcome, a healthy growing baby at seven weeks, then why, you know, I could too. That could happen to me. So we went in and it was such a relief. Um, she found the heartbeat right away on the ultrasound and we got to listen to that and I well, that was so so cool like it was just amazing um and I remember both Eric and I just being like whoa <laughs> like that is so cool I can't believe this is happening to us this is so surreal that we're in this finally in this place and um she measured the baby everything looked perfect this is sad. Oh, <laughs> it's amazing when you can see that stuff. Wow, that's it. No way. So then they scheduled us for another ultrasound two weeks um, from that day. 
I know some clinics maybe do an ultrasound every week or whatever, but for our clinic, we just did it at seven weeks and then we did it again at nine weeks. And, um, so we waited two weeks and, um, at nine weeks, we went back in, got an ultrasound, same thing. She, I was nervous, of course. She found the heartbeat, the ultras, ultrasound tech found the heartbeat fairly quickly. And I'm pretty sure at this ultrasound, I also did a vaginal ultrasound. Um, and she said everything was looking great. I think at this um, appointment, she also mentioned that our baby um, was looking pretty chubby, like measuring a little bit bigger than, um, you know, than just nine weeks, but I was totally fine with that. She said it was nine weeks in a few days, but I thought, great, no problem. I'm, I'm good with a chunky baby. Keep growing, baby, just keep growing. That little heartbeat in there. Little nugget. Here, you see the little arms, we call them um, gummy, gummy bears. Because yeah. they have like these little nuts. Oh my word. <laughs> so fun. It's a lot more noticeable now. But it looks like a baby, right? So fun. So you're nine weeks exactly. Baby's measuring nine and four. Got a nice chunky baby in there. Oh, sweet. <laughs> it wouldn't change a thing now. Everything yeah. great. It was so wonderful. Again, we were just thrilled to have a healthy growing baby with a strong heartbeat. So after this nine-week ultrasound, um, they graduated us from the fertility clinic, which I was like surprised because I didn't know when that was happening. I kind of thought that that wouldn't happen until after 12 weeks after we were out of the first trimester. But for our clinic, they, you know, as long as everything was looking good, they were confident to send me off to a regular OB. Um, and so it was fun. We got to like sign this little tree, um, our name and our due date. Um, they did give us our due date at the seven week appointment. Um, and so we had already known our due date. And then, um, what they say is for our clinic, it's really cute. They say, come back when you have your baby. And, um, actually we don't sign the due date. We sign our, write our name. So I wrote Eric and Chelsea Hansen, and then we put a little heart underneath us. And then we are supposed to come in with our baby's with our baby to visit the clinic and write the name by the heart and our, like the day we had her. So anyway, so they graduated us, gave us a little certificate. Like we graduated from the fertility clinic. The best graduation you'll yeah. ever have, right? Did it. <laughs> and, um, gave us a bunch of paperwork that we could take to our OB and just sent us on our way and said, good luck, come visit us. We hope everything works out well. Hope to never see you ever again. <laughs> Thanks though. Bye. Um, they told us to continue. So this whole time, um, from five days before our transfer, we started progesterone and oil injections, as well as um, we had been on for a couple weeks before that, the estradiol injections. And I talk about this in my FET um, story video that I've done. Um, and so we continued on with all of those medications as well as, um, a prenatal vitamin and a baby aspirin. So we continued on with those. And my doctor told me that we could stop all of those at 10 weeks of pregnancy. So the day I turned 10, 10 weeks pregnant was my last day I was done. Now I know that's not the case for everyone. Some doctors have you go to nine weeks, I think. Some have you go till 12 weeks on all those medications. Um, but for my doctor, he just said, stop it 10 weeks and you'll be good. And I wasn't too worried about that. It was, it was a little bit like uh, nerve wracking to go off of all these medications that I just felt like were sustaining life, I guess, for me, um, th for this baby. But I just trusted in my doctor and I trusted in the process and everything um, obviously worked out well. They did tell me to stay on the baby aspirin um, till 12 weeks of pregnancy and um, the prenatal vitamin, of course, through the whole pregnancy. And sorry for all of the lighting changes in here. There's a bunch of clouds and the sun is going in and out. So just enjoy the wonderful change of light throughout this video. Okay, so by the time I had left our fertility clinic, I did 
have um, a doctor in mind I wanted to go to, an, an OB. My friend had suggested him to me and I felt pretty good about it. And so um, because we graduated a little sooner than I expected at nine weeks, I um, went home basically that day and scheduled an appointment with our OB and we were able to meet with him at I think 11 weeks and that was great at our first appointment we just basically did a quick overview um, explained to him that I did IVF I brought up all the paperwork that our IVF clinic gave um, and he was able to look at all of our blood work and make sure we'd had done you know certain blood tests that they usually want to see at the beginning of a pregnancy. Sorry, finally just had to get up and change like the blinds, move them around a little bit because the sun was blinding me. Um, anyway, so as I was saying, um, it was very smooth transition to our OB's um, care and office and I'm not sure if it's like that for everyone but for us it was and we are really happy with um, that situation we have with that new doctor but it is weird when you're at um, like an OB's office, just like a, once you're kind of like a regular patient, as far as like pregnancy goes, um, your appointments, they don't do ultrasounds at every appointment. You get it done at your 20 week anatomy scan. Um, and you maybe get another one done. I think maybe around 37 weeks. Some people do. I don't know yet. Haven't gone that far yet, but it's just interesting to have very quick appointments and just be sort of a normal patient again, which I like because that means everything is going great with the baby. Everything's, you know, looking good. So, um, so yeah, that was just an adjustment, um, of going from a fertility doctor to just a regular OB. Um, but it's all good. I will say that you will be anxious. I know you like, at least I know I was anxious. You'll most likely feel a lot of anxiety once you find out you're pregnant, um, especially through IVF. Um, but you really, my best advice for that is just to focus on, like you can't control what's gonna happen. And if something were to happen, it's not your fault. It's, um, you know, you're doing the best you can. And I wouldn't, I would just follow the advice of your doctor and not look online too much about what you can and can't do and um, just seek the advice of your fertility doctor or your OB and just try to relax and enjoy. I hate saying that. I can't believe I'm even saying that, but just try to like enjoy as much of the idea, the fact that you are pregnant as possible and not stress so much about is this going to be a successful, healthy pregnancy um, just try to just like soak in every moment that you're pregnant because, and that's what I really tried to do in those first few weeks where I was very worried. Um, and luckily for me, luckily and unluckily, I got hit pretty hard with morning sickness around seven weeks. And so I was pretty sure that everything was okay because I was, I was reminded that I was pregnant a lot, just being very sick and nauseous. Um, but yeah, like I said, just, you are going to be anxious. You are going to be stressed. That's just welcome to motherhood, I think. <laughs> but, um, just try to enjoy, enjoy pregnancy, enjoy, um, the fact that your transfer, where, whether it was fresh or frozen, was successful and that your body is now doing some incredible, amazing things um, to grow this tiny little, teensy tiny little embryo into a full grown healthy baby. So just take it a day at a time and just enjoy that, um, that fact that you are pregnant now. So anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, that was my experience as far as once we finally found out um, we were pregnant and how things kind of played out after that. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And please, if you've been through this and your experience was different from mine, I would love to hear a little bit about what your transitional um, experience was from finding out you're pregnant to kind of graduating 
from your fertility clinic and moving on to an OB um, so that people can know what to expect um, if they are in this same situation or they will be hopefully in this same situation soon. So anyway, that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a fabulous day and I'll catch you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.